Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltari and I'm a genealogist and a passionate traveler. Over the last few years, I've been featuring each vigil of our king's daughter and getting to know their stories a little bit better. There are over 700 of them. We're on episode 196. We've come a long way, We've still got a long way to go. Before we begin, let me show you ways you can support the channel. The first three keep you in the know, subscribe, like, and notify. And we also have a couple of ways that you can help the channel grow. We have a platform called Coffee, which I put the link to, and Patreon, which is a monthly subscription. And we also have the super thanks that you can do right on your dashboard of your YouTube channel. Um, all of these are ways of showing your support and encouraging my efforts. So with that being said, let's get started and get to know episode 196. So we're on episode 196, Mathurine Gretton. And she is a viewer request, and she happens to be the gr direct great-grandmother to one of my professional colleagues who I um, do a lot of research with and a, a lot of um, uh, discussions with. Um, so I'm very, very um, grateful for his assistance as well in, in preparing this episode. Um, there is some controversy about this particular lady. Um, she was at one time a Fijoua on the list. She has been disqualified because she came to New France with family members. So she is not no longer on the list of PDRH, um, but according to the books that I use as kind of my Bible, which are the Peter J. Gagne books, um, she is. So we know she existed. Whether or not she falls under the, you know, the fille du roi um, is is part of you know part of the controversy I suppose but I need to feature each one that was originally a fille du roi um, and uh, and honor them because no matter what they were here and they made a difference so let's get to know her story a little bit better so Mathurine was born in 1648 in the commune as you know commune means township or small village Aubergine in France it is now called Aubergine Le Clouseau, I hope I'm saying it right. Uh, her parents were Pierre Graton and Marie Boucher. Uh, her father was actually a royal notary for the Seigneurie of Aubergine, so she was definitely on that level of mid to upper class. Uh, the area of France that she would have been uh, from, the region, is called Pays de la Loire, so you can see it's right there. And she is part of La Vendée département. Remember, département means county. I put a little picture of Aubergine, the little town, and the church where she might have been baptized. I'm not, I haven't seen the baptismal. Uh, would have been um, from the 12th century and was restored in 2002. The population of Aubergine is under 3,000. So after her parents' death, she left for New France with her brother Claude and his wife and their children. Claude and his wife would really establish the family name of Gretton in New France. So they would arrive in um, Quebec on July 30th, 1670. And this is exactly the controversial point of why she is not viewed as a fille because she came with uh, family members. So she wasn't an orphan or on her own, that sort of thing. The groom that she selected and who selected her, his name was Pierre Toupin de La Pierre, born in 1626 in Rouflac, Rufiac, France. His parents were Guillaume Toupin and Jeanne Arsenault. And now you can see where they, um, uh, you know, what region of France. It's the very famous region of Nouvelle-Aquitaine, where so many people have come from. And inside that, he is from the Charente uh, département, right in the middle of it. Um, in this little town, um, 120 people right now ex live there. Uh, the church, St. Jean-Baptiste, dates from the 12th century. Now, why did Pierre come to New France? As so many did before him, he would come to New France with the Carignan Salaire soldiers with the company La Brise on June 30th, 1665. So remember that um, she would have been arriving um, Matrine would have been arriving in 1670. So he's there five years before. Now, once the soldiers did what they needed to do, they were given the opportunity to stay. He obviously chose to stay and make a new life. So on September 30th, 1670, 
Madeleine married Pierre Toupin, dit La Pierre, in at Beauport. She actually married at Beauport, although it was registered in Quebec City. Um, and so she would have arrived July 30th, and arrived, two months later, she was married. So that was pretty quick uh, and easy. As, and here we have the marriage record of Pierre and Madeleine Gaston for you. So the family would settle at Beauport, and um, this is just a beautiful vi vision of Beauport, which is actually taken um, from Ile d'Orléans, if you can believe it. The history of this area is 1634. That was when the, Engl the, the French came back after they reclaimed Quebec. Robert Guifard, he received the, the Seigneury of Beauport, which means beautiful port, from the Compagnie des Sans Associés, the company of 100 associates. Um, this place really was just one of those very small little places, but by 1698, four, over 400 French colonists settled here just east of the Rivière Boupal and, and was attracted by the flour mill and agricultural land that was there. So it suddenly became, you know, it took a while, in other words, it took a while, but it was very historic for a long time. I've included an older style map from 1673. Um, and also, just to give you an idea of where Beauport is um, in relationship to Quebec and in Lorient, so you can have a look at that. So how many children did they end up having? They would end up having seven children in all. Let's have a look. Therese um, would not, we don't have any information. It appears that she did not marry, but she did live a nice long life. Pierre became a coureur de bois and left for Detroit, but no other information after 1710. Wouldn't it be neat to, for DNA to help find some descendants of Pierre? René married Geneviève Langlois and had 12 children, 11 of whom survived. Louise René married Jacques Berbel, uh, with whom she had three children, but none survived. Ignace married Marie-Elisabeth Dubras and had 11 children, seven of whom made it. Marianne would die in infancy. And Jean would marry, would marry Therese Caron and had three children, all of whom would make it. Now, by 1674, Pierre and Maitrenne would also take on the guardianship of four out of the five children of Maitrenne's brother, Claude, who had returned to France. Um, and his wife would have died in 1674. So they would take on the guardianship of that. Just remarkable couple. And by 1681, we have them in the census. We have Pierre at 55, Madren, his wife, 33, their children, Thérèse, Pierre, René, Louise, Pierre, who is a domestic, so they have a 13-year-old domestic working for them. They have two guns, two, uh, nine goats, and 30 arpents à l'air. So that's about 25 to 26 acres of land, I would think. Uh, just a remarkable achievement in just under over 11 years of marriage. Pierre would pass away at age 76, which is a, a very good feat, but he died this um, and was buried the same day, possibly of the smallpox epidemic that was occurring at that time. Uh, and this is his death record, and this is the uh, cemetery at Boubar. Ren did not remarry right away, but she did eventually find a second groom. And his name was Vincent Brunet, and he was born in 1645 in Neuilly, France, which is part of the Centre Val de Loire in Indre et Loire département, just to, to give you an idea. His parents were Toussaint Brunet and Marie Caillou, and that is the church that he would have been baptized in. Catherine would marry um, Vincent, and she did not have to marry. Obviously, she was probably left very well um, you know, enabled by um, Pierre. Uh, she married Vincent July 22nd, 1710, at the age of 67. So I like to think of this as a, um, a true marriage of, of companionship, of love. Vincent was 65. This is definitely, um, you know, a marriage made for companionship and for love. So not out of need. The couple would continue to live at Beaubar. So Madeleine would die at the age of 81. She died February 5th, 1728. That's an amazing, amazingly long life. She and Vincent would have been married 18 years. Vincent himself 
would die October 31st, 1736, eight years later. Another very long life. And they are both buried at Boba. And here's some further research and a final tribute. I was able to find Les Premières Amis de la Paroise de Beauport. I put the link in for you. And also a lovely picture at the, um, at the cemetery of the, um, of the monument to Pierre Toupin de la Pierre. Uh, and um, just, just definitely I'm going to be going there uh, when I visit Beauport. We have further resources, of course, La Société des Filles du Roi, which has been going on for almost 30 years. All the, all, everything you ever want to know about Les Filles du Roi is found on that website. Also, if you want to become a member, you get a wonderful, um, if you are a direct descendant, you get a wonderful certificate. So check that out. Quebec Genealogical E-Society, Nos Origines, Wikitree. Filles du Roi Descendants, a wonderful group for you to join. I think there's over 6,000 members now. Généalogie Québec is also one of my favorite ones. And a new one that I've discovered is La Société des Filles du Roi. So I love that. Um, they produce a series of books that I often um, present if, if the information um, is part of my presentation. But definitely check that website out. I've posted all the links for you. And thank you for joining me on episode 196. Maitrein Graton was truly a remarkable lady, dying at the age of 81, but coming to Canada and New France at 15 and being able to marry a man much significantly older than herself and maintain that marriage for 33 years um, and, and raise a family and also help raise her, her, um, her brother's family as well. Um, and then get a second chance at love. She had a really full life. I mean, her descendants, as of 1729, were only 37. Yet, somehow, my viewer and my professional colleague are both uh, descendants of that. So it's not where you start, it's where you finish. So her line has kept going. So I love that story. Um, so with that being said, I want to thank um, Maitre and Pierre for their contributions for you know, blessing us with their presence. They are truly a remarkable pioneer um, couple and were able to truly um, begin a, a family tree that you know survives to this day. So we bless their memory and we thank them for their contribution. I also wanna say thank you to my patrons and supporters. Uh, thank you for what you do for me and you support me and you um, are there in terms of encouraging me. I really, really appreciate all that you do. So with that being said, I will see you on episode 197. Until I see you, au revoir.